Hello everyone, this is Ong Fujio Sando. Let's continue CUDA programming series. Today I'm going to talk about CUDA atomics operations. I'm using examples to show you how to use CUDA's atomics syntax and also compare with the CPU version. You can find code for the examples in video description below. Uh, you also can find all of my videos uh, from the link at the video below. If you like these videos, you can support me by subscribing to my channels and like the video. So let's directly uh, expand the examples along with the CPU version solution for that problems. Um, so basically it's just a word count problems. Uh, the input is uh, n size of uh, data stored in buffer. And also we want to categorize uh, how many numbers happens and record a category in the uh, this history array, uh, which size is n. Then, so to solve this in CPU is very straightforward. Uh, we ha just have for loop iteration. Here we can do generating the numbers and uh, store them in histogram at the same times. Here, for each i index, I generate random numbers based on the m category. Then we directly use the i index buffer values and put into the histograms increment its count. Um, pretty straightforward. Then here I use standard coronal libraries to record how many times I spent for those code piece. So this I will use to compare with the CUDA's application later. So what's CUDA atomics operations? Uh, atomics is operation is very small operation which is not required to parallel programming. So usually we prefer to run it in the single thread without the inference of other threads to keep it safe and uh, if efficiency. Then CUDA atomics operation is capable of reading, modifying, and writing a value back to memory without the inference of any other threads. Exactly what we want. And this helps us to avoid the risk conditions automatically. Here is the kernel code I write to solve previous problem. Uh, let me expand it a bit. So in the here, the input of this kernel function is the, the data and the output will be the histogram array. First, I obtain the thread ID. Then I define a shell memories for all the, uh, the block, all the threads of the block. One trick I use here is I know the histogram length is M, then I defined all the uh, kernel numbers in a block as M size as well. Then here I can use uh, each thread represent uh, each numbers uh, all means each keys in the temporary array for the histogram. Uh, you will know why I do this later. Then here for each thread, I reset uh, its count to zero. Then here I call single thread syntax, which means here is we waiting for all thread in same block reach to the point. So basically we wait all the um, slots in the temporary has been reset to zero. You will know why why we do this. Then here I calculate the total number of threads by multiply the number of threads in block and the number of block in grid. Then here we enter into a while loop. This while loop is super important, um, but I'm not going to explain right now. Uh, let me go through like, the whole iteration of the curve first. In these while loops, Basically, I'm calling the atomic add, basically just the increment of one into the temp variables. The index we are using is the, the directly data. 
now you you will know why we have this sync stress before because this index may be uh, mean to the numbers in all the threads, not exactly the thread ID, right? So we need to uh, reset all the temporary before we into this line. Then after that, we increment the uh, thread ID by total number of threads. I'm going to explain later. Now finally, we call another sync threads here because this operation, this operation is we increment our temp count into the total count in later. So this is only for this block, but perhaps there is other countless number stored in the temporary array in other block. So, so we also need to sync all the threads um, then to do this part later. Let's ignore this while loop uh, for a little bit, just uh, using examples to go through the whole iteration first. Um, here, I just made some numbers. Um, then the one dash one means here is what happens in the first block and the first thread. And one dash two is the first block and the second thread. Two, two dash one is uh, block two and the first thread. Then those are the numbers for each thread. Um, also, we will define the two temporary array for each block. Temporary one, temporary two. Um, then basically we assume all the uh, resize has done. Then we do the atomic add here. Since in temporary one, we saw one here, then we increment one for the category one. We we are sending two here, then we increment one in the category two. Um, in temporary two, we see two, so we increment um, second category, and we see two again, then we increment again for the second category. After all these stunts, we call single threads. So we are, we are basically, all those has been done. Then we do atomic add again. So we will copy uh, the count in temporary array into the total array. So let's assume uh, our order is star 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, 2-1, one, 2-2. Two, two. Now what happens in the histogram is first we copy uh, this one into the total, then the 1 initialize 0, then now it's B1. Then we copy um, the count of 2, then count of 2 become 1. For temporary 2, then for the first thread, right now we are in the first thread. Um, the first thread, we only copy the first category in temporary 2 because here we are we are seeing in the thread index. Right, thread index here is 1. But in temporary 2, we, we haven't seen the uh, category 2 yet. So what happens here, the 1 will be 0. So after this, we adding 0 into the category 1. So it's still 1. Finally, when we go into uh, doing the 2 dash 2, so after 2 dash 2s, we have 2 count in the second index. So we will increment 2 onto the previous 1, which is 3. Finally, then our final output for histogram is we are sending one for once, and the two for third time, and this is exactly what our data represent. Now we are dealing the final issue is that here each thread only been using once because the total number um, of data and also the n is 4 here, which is equal to the total number of threads we have. But what if we want to scale up the application to any arbitrary n number? What if n is much greater than our total number of threads? 
So we need to use single thread to do multiple similar operation. Then this is why we need this while loop. And say for example, when we're at one dash one, and we done this one, then we need to look at the another value in the data. So this will be just jump to five because one dash two, two dash one, two dash two already uh, processing the data in the second, third, and fourth uh, index on the array. So here we calculate total number of threads and uh, kind of make an offset and increment on the current thread ID to add one dash one to find the correct number we want to process in the next iteration. I also recommend you to try um, design your own kernels so then you can play around with those n number and m numbers. So uh, once n number is much greater than your total number of threads you defined, uh, you will understand this why we need this while loop um, more, more easily. All right, so after we define the kernel function as what we did in our previous examples, we have a CUDA event to measure the GPU running times. We define the input buffer, we define the output histogram, and we just call these kernel functions by um, define 100 blocks, and each block have main threads. Then eventually we output the GPU time. After this, I need to uh, have some testing to make sure my GPU's operation are work as I expected. So I compare all the counts for each numbers with CPUs, and of course, um, there's nothing mismatch happening. Then eventually, we can compare the two op uh, running time for two operation. Uh, of course, the GPU is much faster than CPU. But it doesn't mean we cannot acceleration the CPU application. As you many of know, the CPU also can be parallels to using multiple threads. After optimize my previous CPU version, it's likely uh, make the CPU run faster for the examples and uh, always uh, for my current uh, GPU application is possible. All right, so that's all the content I want to talk today. And if you have any suggestion, questions, feel free to leave below the videos. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.